What's up, everybody? This is your girl, Butter B. Rocker, here on Transparency Talks Podcast. We have a fantastic show for you today. Um, we have Mr. Terry Mora and Nat Robinson. How are you doing? Hi, <laughs> what's doing? going on? What's happening? <laughs> Man, I'm, I'm super excited to see both of you guys. Cool. Glad to be here. So um, you are the owner of First Priority Music. Uh, yeah, still the owner. We still have artists. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, the founder. Uh, you know, it's a different time now, and there's different types of artists. we are dealing with a lot of young kids now. And the pandemic, that set a lot of things back. Right. So a lot of things on hold. Right, right. Until uh, we start to move again. Right. But, but yeah, yeah it, was, it was the best ride ever. <laughs> um, like, like Terry mentioned... He just mentioned a few of the people. There were so many other people that, you know, Positive K, you left him out. Oh, and yeah. Quite, quite a few others. We had Kid Amen. He was number one, 26 countries at one time. Uh, just on and on and on. We worked with so many different people. Did you start your label um, because of your son, or you already knew you was going to start it? And so I, started, I started because of my son. I absolutely... See, what I was doing, I was in the club business. Okay. I had a club in New York called Tribeca. It was the number one club in New York for a year or so. And after we ran that for about five to six years, I kind of like, me and my partner took a break. And after that break, you know, we took a, we, we got lost. Uh, so when I came back, instead of going back into the club business, I went back into the music business, which I knew nothing about. So I didn't know anything about club business either when I went into it, but that's beside the point. Right, right. Well, it's real cool because uh, your your son's group, Audio Tunes, um, mm -hmm. had the hit song, Make It Funky. Make It Funky, but the biggest hit was um, Top Billing. Called okay. Top Billing. Okay. Top Billing has 290 some odd samples. Wow. Uh, there's a new song coming out soon. Uh, Will I Am just did a new song, and he's using Top Billing in it. Uh, I don't know when he's going to release it, but we already heard it in, in his fire. Nice, nice. Right. Okay. All right. So, um, Terry, you are known as the hottest disabled entrepreneur in America. In America, yeah. <laughs> so let's speak stop, on don't that. Stop doing <laughs> <laughs> so let's speak on that a little bit. Um, can you tell everybody about your disability? Well, my disability is actually I was born with cerebral palsy. When I was born, my mother had the German measles 55 years ago. And that complicated the birth. When I was actually born as a baby, uh, ironically, I couldn't sit up straight. Every time you would sit me in a chair, I would roll over. And I also had a uh, hard time walking, keeping my balance. Mm -hmm. And then in addition to that, for some reason, I didn't like milk, straight white milk. Mm -hmm. So even to this day, which is very weird, I can't drink milk unless it's got some type of flavor in it. Yeah. But I got to go back to this man right here because he's so humble. This brother here has, I mean, from everything from MC Light, Janet Jackson, Mackay Pfeiffer, uh, to Chino Arnold, just a bunch of people. Yeah, that, it, 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 it's, it's, it's fun. I'm, I'm a little more subtle guy. I like to just be cool and instead of talking too much junk, I'd rather yeah. work hard and make it work. You got the <laughs> action. You, you got the I, action. I gotta, I gotta say one thing back on Terry. Terry, Yes, he had his disability, but some of the best times we've had in our life <laughs> have been crazy. I, I never forget this time at the office one time. It was at the end of the day. You know, we had a lot of bodyguards, big guys. We always kept them. And at the end of the day, they decided they're going to wrestle. So these guys are fighting. And, you know, Terry, they took Terry, threw Terry across the floor. I said, oh, my God, they're going to hurt Terry. Terry jumped up on the floor, jumped on one of the biggest guys around his neck. I'm like, what is going on in there? You know? It was like, I said, oh, I guess Terry's okay. I'm out of here. I'm, all good. I'm leaving. <laughs> um, so it's, it's fun time. A good time, fun time. Great people. You know, we're doing a film right now called Top Villain. So we're working on that right now, uh, which... Terry will play his play. You know, he has to get yeah. his son or somebody to play his Yeah, role, yeah. You know? Somebody gonna play me in a movie. Oh, <laughs> how dope is that? That's really cool. 
So um, I think the part that I'm missing is how you guys met and started working together. Oh, wow. Tell, okay. tell me so how I, well, I guess I just knew in the early days. <laughs> oh, let me tell you, yes. Let me tell you how he did that. Okay, so here's, let, let me tell you the story so we get this on tape here. <laughs> so when I first decided to get into the music industry, I was calling First Priority Music Record Label every week trying to reach Nat Robinson. <laughs> and every time I would call, the lady would say, Nat Robinson's not in right now, can I take a message? And I said, well, can you let him know I called? And I called next week. Nat Robinson's not in, can I take a message? I'll call next week. I called that label so many times, I started dating the receptionist. <laughs> me, and, me and her went started dating. <laughs> so I found out years later that the record label was actually an answering service. Yeah. Oh. So he, first started, yeah. So he was never there anyway to get the message. <laughs> that is too funny. Well, That's we were on the road then. It was kind of, you know, you were always busy. We are going. We didn't have a full staff then. Right. So we got uh -huh. a full staff, staff later. So I was, on, I was actually manager, road manager. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know. so I wind up going to a meeting one night mm -hmm. with a gentleman by the name of MC Search. Okay. And in this meeting was MC Search, Biz Markey, Melly Mel, uh, KRS-One, and a young man by the name of Milk. And when I said that I was Terry Moore, Milk went back to Nat mm -hmm. and K-Rock, who happens to be MC Light DJ, and said, hey, you know, I just met this guy named Terry Moore. Nat went to K-Rock and said, you got a cousin named Terry Moore that worked at Billboard? And the rest is history. That's how I started with him. <laughs> nice. So we snatched nice. him up by the Billboard. And um, it was, it was it's probably one of the greatest times because Terry was handling radio. Mm -hmm. And he was, he was out there. He was hustling the radio. And one day, he was so good at radio, I called him into the office and said, Terry, you're going to be in charge of publicity. <laughs> like, what is that? Terry said, what is that? I said, <laughs> and Terry told me all the reasons. Why not? And I said, OK, now you just told me for half an hour, why not? <laughs> Go back to your office and figure out how you're going to do this. Yeah. <laughs> he came back. He had a plan. And we started. He, started, he took over the publicity department. Wow. We, we've been on tour buses together. We've been on the road together with everybody from Ice T to Queen Latifah just doing road trips. Yeah, we did a, we did a tour with, with Will, Will Smith and um, with Chuck D. Just public and enemy. Public enemy. Uh, we did, I mean, we, we toured everywhere around the world. You mentioned it, we was there. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. who was the first artist that you started working with when you when you started working with? Uh, Audio 2. OK, so that was the first artist you put them on. That was the first artist. And then Light, uh, then Positive. Um, then we had Lazy and Michi Me first. Michi Me was the first Canadian artist to ever have a major deal in America. Wow. Under Atlantic, we put it under Atlantic Records with Sylvia Rome. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to connect you with Mishi so you guys can do an interview about her. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It's, it's, it's crazy hearing, hearing all the stuff that y'all did and, and the people that you worked with and everything. Um, and then to know that you're the one that started it with them and, and, and had their careers go the way it went. Like, that's wow. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, it, it's one thing to work hard. Yeah, it's another thing to work hard and have fun. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So then you don't count the hours. You don't yeah. mind working sixteen hours a day. Yeah, so yeah. whatever it takes, you know. Yeah, I I can definitely uh, attest to that because you know when I'm on the road, it doesn't matter you know what time it is because I'm having fun and I'm doing what I love to do. So when I'm yeah, overseas, exactly. I'm like, I call it a workcation because I'm getting paid to do what I love to do. So it doesn't, you know, it's not work for me. So. Okay, Ms. Robinson, we hear you. Yeah. When, 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 <laughs> I'm going to show, show Nat some of your work. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Just yeah. Let him check it out. Let him check me out. You know, I know y'all hip hop over there, but you might need an R&B, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Exactly. We, no, we do R&B. We've done R&B, hip hop, rock. Amen. Amen. Amen was a, a pop artist. Uh, okay. So you know, we we do it. We it's all there. If it's right and sounds good, and and you know it's a hit, you go with it. Absolutely, mm -hmm. I love that. 
I love that. Yeah. So you said that y'all are working on a film project that's coming up? Yes, we're, we're working on a film project right now. It, you know, it's in the early stages. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of things held us up, you know, like we said, because of the virus, the um, pandemic. Right. But uh, everything is blowing up. You know, we're putting it together and we'll see. Okay. We'll see. Okay. So um, speaking of the COVID, um, I know it's definitely stopped a lot of stuff over, over here. Uh, yeah. So um, how are y'all coping with, with the COVID um, and, and with your, your businesses and everything? Um, of course, most of the music industry, um, touring-wise, is completely shut down. Well, you could probably answer that better regarding tours and, and well, stuff like that. Well, I've been in, I've been in, I, I've only, I've only, since the May, uh, I say May, uh, April, April, May, I've been home. Okay. I've been, I go out, I do things, but only two people been to my house is Terry <laughs> and, uh, I have a son-in-law, uh, I don't know if you ever heard of Premium Pete. Yeah. He does a pot. Yeah, he was here last night. And we hung out last night. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so so what <clears throat> what happens? I deal with a lot of people around the world inter you know internationally. So you know, you build these friendships that are gonna last a lifetime. Right. Uh, those are people that I know into that they're they're adults, they're grown, they've been in the game so long, live nations, um, they you know all the different platforms. So I have a friend in, in London. What he did something very unique. He built, he got 12 stages. Mm -hmm. He talked to some equipment company in London. He got 4K screens and music. And what he would do is go to open fields and you come in with your car. Yeah. And stage, 12 stages around London. And the group actually performed live. Yeah. But the people protected because. They were in the cars. Yeah. Mm. So he's doing that, he's, and he's moving these live groups all around London. And you just drive in. You got your number where you park your car, go. You listen to the whole concert. Uh, that's dope. Nicely spaced that's dope. between yeah. each other. I, it's funny that you said that because one of the things um, I had, a, I had another show. No, it was my birthday, and I had a, um, I did a, a, a Zoom call and everything, and went Facebook Live, and I was talking. I had a lot of my musician friends, you know, online. And we got to talking and I was telling them the exact same thing that you just said. I was like, you know, we really should, but I didn't think about open fields, but what I had told them is we should um, contact the, um, they have the movie theater, the drive-in movie theater off of Moreland Avenue um, here yeah. in Atlanta. And I was like, mm -hmm. I'm going to reach out to them because we could throw concerts there. They already have the big screen. You know, they already yeah, get right. the cars. They already got the connections to be able to listen to the TV shows and everything. Oh. We throw some concerts, but they kind of shut me down because they was like, due to the COVID, they're not doing any outside oh. events. But yeah. it sounds like your, your guy over in London he, he had the right thing, so that's he, got, he, got, he actually has it on lock. We've been talking um, back and forth. We'll see what happens, but he's actually, he's with Live Nation now. Yeah. He's actually the guy who had, was doing the Michael Jackson tour when Michael passed. Nice, mm. okay. Um, so, you know, he's a great guy. He wants to, you know, hey, let's see if we can do something in the U.S. And of course, yeah. I'm doing with Terry. So, you know, we're gonna, Try to put the right. Well, we'll see what happens on the U.S. side. Yeah, so we're yeah. watching what's happening in London right now. Yeah, yeah. It's always good to be able to get ahead of the curve, and when you see something, you know, mm -hmm. going on, if you could be that first one to, you know, to to set that footprint, that's yeah. always a great thing. And you know something, Terry? I don't know if I told you about this. <clears throat> I was looking at this um a show or something or documentary in in Holland. And what they did in Holland is so amazing. They built these little plexiglass houses and they put a table in each one. This is the outdoors of the uh, restaurant. Mm -hmm. And everything's closed off. And they serve you. You can eat in there. It's just you and maybe one person or, or four right. people. Right. Uh, I don't know how that works with, you know, the mask. Like right now, we're pretty much do, trying to talk this way. We took right. the mask off. Right. But, um, but you know, they did something like that and they're protecting all their people and yeah. their numbers are going down. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there, there's still ways outside of, you know, outside of performing, um, 
support, you know, the musicians and stuff that are on the page and listening and trying to figure out, man, what should I do and what can I do? There's so many things that you can do behind the scenes. Um, being a songwriter and doing background vocals and stuff, you know, that I've always been doing, I'm able to, I do a lot of stuff overseas, as I had mentioned, so I'm able to still work, thankfully, you know, not just on stage, but you can do stuff uh-huh. behind the scenes and still, you know, get out there and make a big, big splash with, with everything. And then with um, so much going on with, uh, you know, the internet and technology now, I'm sure yeah. that you and your team and your, you know, your your artists and everything, y'all been able to, um, to do some really fantastic things from that. But speaking of that, how has it been from back when y'all first started to now how technology is and, and the social medias and stuff like that? Well, you know, I, I, I believe I've always believed in the last 15, really last 15, 20 years, I saw the shift happening where I felt like as an artist that you know, when we came into the game in the 80s, you had thousands of major yeah. labels. And it was sort of like majors was up here, independence was here. Right. Now the shift is independence are here, majors are down here. Yeah. So with technology, everybody can do their own label. Yeah. Everybody can really, it's really in the favor of an independent as opposed to major now because so many things are shifting directly for the independent. You, you know, before you used to have to go to the majors for the, distribution to right. the mom and pop stores and you had to have the, them do the video shoots and put you on a promo tour. Well, now you can do a promo tour from your living room in front of thousands of people on YouTube. Right. Your distribution right. now is online. You're shooting your own video with your cell phone. So it's really shifted in favor of an independent label now. Yeah, 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 definitely. So, um, Nat, how, how important do you think... Um, having a, a good social media presence is um, well, your it's art. A and it's like, you know, do, do I ride, and, you know, with a horse and buggy or do I get in a Porsche? Right. We have the Porsche right now. <laughs> and what happens is you have to go along with time. Yeah. It's a different era. You're not going to win going back old days, you have to have a digital platform, you have to have a digital footprint. This is the new world. And if you, here's something very interesting that's happening in New York, a friend of mine just told me. You know Lanier? Yeah. Yeah, Lanier just told me. In New York, I think it's Columbia or or Cornell, one of the colleges there, they have a program for senior people. Hmm. And you go to these classes and they teach you about Facebook and how to use the current digital stuff today. Yeah. And they, they pay you. Oh, wow. Now, they pay wow. you instead of you paying them. Wow. It, it draws everybody in. And I'm talking <laughs> about pay you well. <laughs> That's like real. <laughs> you know? That's like real. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. So, so they're even saying now, we're trying to say, look, let's don't leave the generations before behind. Right. Let's have them with us. Now, basically, I don't really get into it too deep, but I was an engineer. I worked for IBM before I got into these things. Okay. So I know everything about digital. So I was an engineer for IBM. I left, I went into the club business. From the club business, I went into the music business. Wow. So yes, you have to respect digital marketing. You have to respect the digital platforms because it's not gonna go away. Actually, it's gonna become more aggressive and more in your face every year. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Definitely. You can't go back. You just yeah. can't. Yeah, I think I think I think those those days. Well, you know, also back then you didn't really have like, you know, the cell phones and, and you didn't really have the internet wasn't like present like that. Uh, right. how it is now. Now when I you know first started, I, I still had beepers. Yeah. Right, right. We, we, we did <laughs> we had those sky sky pages that you job pages, yeah. <laughs> so we can yeah. reach you down wherever you are. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're really playing us now, talking telling those schools. But but there's nothing wrong. I know there's nothing wrong with going out to a nice acoustic show right. and musicians and I mean I like real musicians, period, but that's exactly it. but it's nothing wrong with going in there and enjoying yourself. But if we're going to talk about 
the massive music industry globally, we have to talk about digital marketing. Right. Definitely. Definitely. Um, so what advice do you give um, a new artist that's coming out right now um, on getting their stuff out there? And should they, um, you know, there, there's a such thing as, you know, indie labels that are doing some major, major things. And then there's just regular indie labels where you just starting off. Um, and then, of course, there's the big labels and everything. Um, what should they be going for right now? I would probably say that um, as a new artist, you um, and piggybacking off what Nat says, you got to learn social media marketing. 99% of artists out there, you know, they're on social media. Unfortunately, they're not marketing correctly. Right. Um, learn how to social media market and learn how to really build your platform so that you can generate people coming to you in a, in a, in a real fan base. Yeah. Learn how to network. Uh, a lot of a lot of artists don't really know the art of networking, and if you're meeting someone like a Nat Robinson in an elevator, or LA Reed in an elevator, or even a Sylvia Rhone, you should be able to walk out of that elevator with some type of connection where they want to sit down and, and, and spend time with you, as opposed to you, you know, shoving a, a CD in their hands and saying, you know, listen to me when you get a chance and stuff like that. So. Learn the art of networking and also learn the business. Yeah. Because it's called the music business for a reason. Yeah. So those yeah. three things, definitely, I would say every artist needs to embrace those, those three principles. Yeah. And you have, to, you have to realize you're, the evolution is pertinent. It's there. It's going to be there. It's going to change. Our music is going to, you know, what happens in this music game, it was funny. I had a daughter that was in college. Mm -hmm. I went to pick her up one time in college. And I'm walking through the dorm. And all I hear is Al Green. So I get to her room. I talk, and I said, they're playing Al Green. She said, oh, they just discovered it. <laughs> you know? I said, oh, but you know, she was raised with all that kind of stuff. You know, you know they just, they just, you know. And I'm going past some rooms, at least three or four rooms. And they were playing Al Green's music. Well. Green, what's going on in here? You know, so what happens is we're, we're at a stage in the business that there's a certain account, certain type of music that dominates. Mm -hmm. There will be next year a different type that will dominate. Right. Some will be pushed down over here. They'll have their groups that follow them. Um, everything is going to change. That's what's so beautiful about the music business mm -hmm. and the film business. Everything changes and becomes more dynamic, but you can always go back. How I said we can't go back, you know, before digital. Mm -hmm. um, it depends on what you're trying to do. Right. I'm going to correct that. If you're just enjoying what you do at that moment, and you, you're a jazz artist, and you, you, you're working this, this circus, mm -hmm. circuit, cool. But if you want to be the aggressive person that's actually making things happen at the moment is a different it's a different way to, to approach that yeah but yeah. The, yeah but the thing is it's really it's really easy i can go into the madness and love the madness me and Jim, remember we went to go see um naughty by nature with uh, the guys here in georgia oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. no yeah. it was it was madness. Oh, yeah right so yeah. i'd like to go to to sweet here in you know in georgia and listen to a some soft, nice music, and I'm, I don't have to think, I don't, you know, it's just relaxing. Yeah. So I think when you come from a generation, you may slip out of what's happening at the moment mm -hmm. and hang in your generation. Because you're not looking for, you're looking for memories and right. things that happened back in the days and your, your first love, your first wife, your first husband, you know, that kind of stuff, your first right. birth of a kid. So you want to go back and enjoy that. And there's nothing wrong with that. And we find out that's what a lot of people do. That's why we have, right now we say old school, but prior uh, to the pandemic, <laughs> they were knocking it out. All yeah, the yeah. Working and everywhere, you know? Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Packing places, you know? There was actually, there's go. actually more old school um, performances going on than anything here mm -hmm. and overseas. You, yeah. 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 Oh, overseas is, See, they have a different Ooh. love. I, 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 I don't want to... Overseas, they look at things. It's 
the people in, in America, we're so, we're right there. We see everything. Everything's on top of us. When they go overseas, an artist that's medium in America is a superstar right. to them overseas. I, can, I agree. Whole, you know? Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I remember, um, and it's coming self-evident today, but Nat said to me probably more than five years ago, maybe almost 10 years, 10 years now, and I think about it often, he said music is no longer, I think you said music is more now a marketing tool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it, you know, before, before and when an artist made a song, they made a song, you know, because they were building their fan base in regards to selling music. Mm -hmm. But now music is really just a marketing tool so you can get your endorsement deal. Yeah, right? yeah. If you, at, if you look at these young artists and really dig <laughs> deep into their career, the money doesn't come from downloads and the yeah. money comes from shows. Yeah. Right. It comes from, you know, sponsoring and you know, on and on and on. The, uh, all the ancillary opportunities the artists can get. Coca-Cola, this, that. Yes. So, yes, the music is really your tool. Yeah. You're, you're not, if you get a, if you get a, a million streams on Spotify, you know, you're lucky if you make $800 or something, <laughs> you know. Right. It's not about money on, on, on those platforms. Yeah. Uh, YouTube, you, you get a billion, billion streams uh, plays, you don't make that much money. Yeah, yeah. But you become visible. Yeah. And you know who you are, and you're able to go out there and manipulate everything else, commercial, film, everything. You know? mm -hmm. So, you know, hey, that, that, that you know, it's stuck in Terry's head, and I believe that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Your, mar your music is your marketing. That people love your music, then they love everything else that you're doing where you're going to make the real money from. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I make I make majority of my money from um, performing overseas. I am an independent artist and I have been touring overseas like forever. And like you were saying, like you can go overseas. I mean, y'all might not know me here, but you go overseas, you got people fainting, you got them holding up signs and you came yeah. to the place and you're like, wow, this is crazy. Absolutely. Then you come back yeah, home I, and I, nobody I, know you. <laughs> I've seen your set. Yeah. I've seen your set on stage. I mean, you got like thousands. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's, that's cool. check that out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that but that's cool because when you go to those places, they love you so much. They so much appreciate you being there. Yeah. And yeah. I used to do a lot of USO shows, mm -hmm. and those are the greatest things in the world. But here's what I learned: <clears throat> doing a USO show, the kids are buying. This is when we had records and CDs and things. Mm. When they were buying the music, they were buying it from, on the military bases and on the on the ships. Mm -hmm. The credits of those those music, individual music things they buy was credited back to the United States because it goes through distribution in Texas. Mm -hmm. So you go out on a tour, you now you have two, three thousand soldiers out there. Right. You walk in there, they love you because they're they're not used to having that kind of um music in in their life. Right. right. So when you get when they get out of the military. You got fan fans. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Let me see if not in there that long. They might be only got a year left. Yeah. They go, oh, yeah. man, so-and-so came. It was the greatest thing in the world. I remember um, uh, Holly Berry used to go, and uh, Sinbad would go, and, you know, it was just, these kids loved it. Yeah, you know? yeah. And they treated you like royalty. Right. Yeah. You know? so, yeah. You, you can even use that as a platform to build your base also. Yeah, I, well, I, I remember, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I remember we did a show and he said, you know, with, with the kids. And I remember we did a show. We had an outdoor arena. And uh, it was MC Light performing. Audio 2 was performing. And Sinead O'Connor was hanging out with us. Oh, yeah. In you Trenton, know, New in, in New Jersey. Yeah, Trenton, New Jersey. Yeah. In Trenton, New Jersey. And when we walked to the stage, we had to walk through the a field to get to the stage. Uh -huh. And you literally had hundreds of kids on your left side and hundreds of kids on the right side. And we had to walk together, linked up, mm -hmm. sort of like holding on to each other. Right. And we had to take off our clothes, our jewelry and everything 
just to make Walk sure that they would snatch it. Right. And I remember Sinead O'Connor was looking like, what is going on here? What I mean, she was like totally like, because she, you know, she never, when we would walk in, and it, they, they, these kids are crying. Right. While they're right. trying to reach out to you. So, yeah. And, and let me to follow up on that. What was that That magazine, the rock magazine? That wrote a thing, um, Sinead. The paper, maybe? No, the magazine. It was a magazine. Um, like Rolling Stone? Was, Rolling Stone. Rolling Stone did inter interviewed her after that night. Uh -huh. they, they said, what's the best time you ever had in your life? She said, the best time I ever yeah. had in my life is playing Roundup with FPM, with all, all the members of the first party music. So that's the best moment I ever had in my life. When she was running around, we, we had found an old abandoned parking lot somewhere <laughs> and got out of the car and everybody jumped out of the limousine. Well, they did, I didn't, but they were literally running around the parking lot playing tag with MC Light and Sinead O'Connor and Milk and Giz and Pop. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like some amazing times. So I know that you guys got to get ready to go, but I do have maybe two more questions for you. Okay. okay so I, I just did. I just said move back everything 15 minutes. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so, um, all right. So an artist comes out. They are an independent artist. But the problem is, you know, it, it's kind of hard to to really get that social media um, buzz, um, but you could have the best music and you can really be doing a lot of big things, but your numbers isn't that big because of, you know, the Beyonce's and all of those type of people. Um, so how would they be able to, um, you know, cut through the noise and get your attention? Yeah, yeah. No, well, how you cut the noise, you're going to have to do some dynamic things. You got to do, it's, it, it, that doesn't change from the old days to today. You have to do something exciting. Right. The only thing is before you're on a stage, maybe with a thousand people. And these exciting things you do now, you're on the stage with 20, 30, 40,000 people on the digital platform. It's right. a different world. Right. So you got to do something really exciting you gotta do something on the next level you truly 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 have to be an entertainer yeah yeah you really do and if you want to last and survive you have to be able to do that and what you're saying about how you're doing things overseas i think that is so smart because this is this is a global community now it's not what mm. it used to be right territory anymore right. you know well we're going to the european ter territory of germany and we're going to australia ter territory no it's global now right and so you really have to reach out for that global world yeah in order to 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 maintain what you have to do and that's still and for me you know you know young kids be like oh man you've always loved digital I, you know I, you know I, I i don't care you know I can, if i live to be 80 years old I'll still be talking about whatever the new thing is today. Right. So, yeah. So how you got to get out there? You have to be creative. Yeah. You have to be creative. And if you're not creative, you better go find yourself a friend like Terry. Say, how are we going to, how are we going to do this? <laughs> you know, and you got to work it off that way. And then you can, you can build, mm -hmm. like you see with that, that international um, base. Yeah, yeah. What's the kid's name? Oh, God. What is the guy's name from here? He went to uh, Japan. Um, rest in Development. Speech? Speech. Speech, Speech went to Japan uh, to do a show. As after everything had you know, it died out. And when he got there, he found out he was a superstar yeah. in Japan. <laughs> Several friends. Oh, got all the people that from the group that won, and they all moved to Japan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They stayed over there for a good minute. Good minute. Right? I have a couple of friends that played with him, and I mean, I was like, y'all, y'all moved over there, didn't you? Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. And that's what you have to do because we look at things different now. See, back in the days, we only went, we went to England. Germany, maybe the Netherlands, those three places. That was Europe. Mm -hmm. We know we didn't go to Australia. We didn't go that much to China or Japan or South Korea. Now we get up, it's global. And yeah. that makes mm -hmm. the difference. Yeah. That's the difference right there. Yeah. And you got to play to that glo global um, community yeah. as well as to your home community.
Absolutely. That's how, that's how you really get it there. Now you gotta come up with something. You, okay, let me, let me put something out there. Go, go get yourself involved in a major charity. You're not gonna make a dime. But if that charity is broadcasted to 200 million, 300 million people around the world, look how much exposure you got mm -hmm. overnight. Yep. Yep. You know? So yeah, it's not yeah. every all it's not all going out and everybody's paying you in the beginning. Yeah. yeah. You know, you gotta do some freebies. You know? yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. That's some really that's some real solid advice right there. It really is. Yeah. Yeah, you got to. I mean it's, the times have changed. Yeah. It's changed and you know, we gotta you know, we we gotta we gotta run with the times. We gotta, you know, get out there. Maybe we don't wanna be a rapper or we don't want this stuff, we don't want a certain thing. But what you want still fits in to the digital platform, mm -hmm. right. whatever it is. Mm -hmm. You know, you're gonna, you may say, I'm, I'm an alternative guy. I'm a rock guy, I wanna do rock. Yeah, do rock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But your audience is gonna be bigger than it was 10, 20 yeah, years right. ago. Absolutely. I also yeah. think that artists should definitely look into making sure that they, you know, try to get their music on TV and film and, yes. and gaming and everything. There's so yeah. many ways that you can get out there. You don't just have to be on stage. You ain't just got to be that artist, that big artist. You can be an independent and do major things. Yeah. And, you know, and also what's happening big, and Terry can tell you that, the reason Milk has almost 300 samples and reuses because we marketed it that way. Mm. We pushed it and we pushed it. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you something really funny. Jer um, Billboard one time, we would, re <laughs> we would re-service the music over and over again, like once every two or three years. So we re-serviced Top Billing. Mm -hmm. A new guy was at Billboard. He picks the record out. He wrote an article. Yeah, this is whack. This will never work in a million years. The thing already blew up. They said, you don't know Top Billing. You fired the guy. You don't know Top <laughs> You know, so uh, yeah, no, it, it's that's what you got to do. You got to be creative. Yeah, it's nice to have a team or somebody with you. That you know, you, you, it's always good to have that mastermind group. Yeah, uh, I don't let me get into that because I'm a Napoleon Hill <laughs> fanatic. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so but you know, <laughs> but you know uh, 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 but going back to top billing. That's actually the beat for Mary J. Blige, Real Love. Real Love. You know what? I was just thinking that. I was like, I've heard that in, in a couple of other samples. Okay. okay. Uh, that was the first one. And what happened is Puffy, Puff did it, didn't ask permission on it. So um, we were going somewhere. We came out of some screening um, with the Wayne Brothers. And I saw Puff. I, I, and Puff said, hey, now, man, we got to work this out. I said, look, man, you got my number. You can, you can get my number from anybody. We'll work it out. Yeah. And see what people don't understand in this game, they don't like to work things out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They want <laughs> so I could have took all of the money by law, because you infringed on our copyright and kept one hundred percent of your royalties. Right. But I would never do that. Because he was a friend, he's a friend of ours. Yeah. And if I did that one time, nobody else would ever come yeah. to use that product again. Right. Right, right, right. That's how we got 290 something samples and reuses because they know they can call us. Oh yeah, man, we'll work that out. Yeah, we'll give we give everybody a sync license. Yeah, we just did um uh, Jennifer Lois Lo, uh, Jennifer Lopez um Hustler. Okay. We got this in there. Big big sync license. Yeah. Um, Will I am just two three weeks ago. So you gotta you, you just you, you just gotta be there. And you gotta be smart enough. You know I I, I don't want to just this individual, but there was an individual that had a song that was used, a sample in a song. She took 100% of the, of the um, royalties. Mm -hmm. All the other stuff, everything was gone. Do you know nobody else ever used that record ever again? Wow. That was it. Yeah. Because it, it, set, it set the stage. Right. At least with top billing, people say, okay, now to work with you. Yeah. Now to, you know, he'll come to the table with you. But if you set the tone where, you know, you're going to take 100%, everybody's going to look at you in regard to, uh, I'll mess with you. Yeah, don't right? mess with. So this, this person <laughs> that wind up taking 100% from that artist, 
they could have got so much mileage out of that song. Oh, yes, to their kids. To the, I, mean, I mean, and we're not going to say the name, but that was a big song. It was a big song. That was a big song. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing was so funny, the young lady that did it didn't realize who I was. And she was talking to me because she asked, wanted me to manage, but I, could, I, I couldn't manage. So I only managed people that I work with, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, I had a few I did because I knew him since young. Right. And he was calling me up about managing her and she's telling me, yeah, I took all the money and, <laughs> and, and you know, MC Light bought me a new house and Cosmic <laughs> K bought me a Mercedes Benz. <laughs> I'm just sitting there, she didn't know what it was. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. That's it. Okay, I, I really can't do that in this particular time. Yeah, yeah but you, you know, in, in the industry, you want to be approachable. Yeah, yeah definitely. definitely. Yeah, you want to be approachable and somebody that can come to the table and work, yeah. Because, you know, in this industry, news travels. Yeah. And, we, you know, and, and everybody thinks that the music industry is so big. The <laughs> industry very is small, very small. Honestly. Yeah, it's very small. Yeah. And you got to, I think it's like anything else. You gotta love it. See, if you're mm -hmm. just in it for the money, it's hard. You yeah. Say, oh yeah, I'm gonna do that. And that record's big, you know. MC Hammer. Look, look at MC Hammer. MC Hammer used um uh, Rick James song, and uh, you can't touch. This. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, Rick, James, yeah. Okay. Rick James was in prison. When Rick went back and took all the money from that, he got ten million dollars. Wow. 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 Because you know, you know, so right. you know, you could do that. Well, I got ten million. I'm good. <laughs> but you're not gonna be messing with people with the music business. Right. 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 I'm good. I got that ten million. I'm good. Nobody's gonna touch me anymore. I'm out. <laughs> I got an island somewhere. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but when you're dealing with smaller levels, yeah. not only do you allow these people to um, be part of your song, you actually. Keep, it, it, it feeds the life of your record. Yeah, no definitely. Going tomorrow, and it's like it's brand new. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Whole different your, audiences hearing it. Yeah, yeah. You hit, you know, it feeds your base. It's, yeah. You just keep feeding them over and over again. You know. Yeah. Genius. So good. It's good. You know that to me, that's that's a win. Yeah, that is a win. Yeah. Yeah. Win. You gotta think like you know what you have to think like. <sighs> you have to think like an executive. Well, I was an executive in the computer world, but um, you got to think like that. You got to think what's best for this corporation. Right. What do I do next in this corporation? What do I do next? <gasps> no, I can't have that person. I can't support or sponsor that person because that person's crazy and mm -hmm. they're racist. No, because that's going to hurt the brand. The brand. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, so you got to think the same way as an artist mm -hmm. or right. a manager. Mm -hmm. you know? Not just run and do it for today, do it for for the long run, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, well, I don't want to take up no more of you guys' time, but I do absolutely want to thank you for coming on to the show. This was amazing. Thank you. Thank well, you, you. well, you know what? Terry speaks so highly of you. Oh, thank you, Terry. You there's no way I'd miss this. <laughs> <laughs> Nat, Nat, let's say superstar. Nat's the superstar here. No, I'm a... But better be doing a thing, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, um, yeah, I'm going to watch your, your, your shows. I'm going to get Terry to give me the links so I can yeah. watch what's going on, you know? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure you get connected and get, you know, get out of the step. Yeah. Okay, yeah, cool, definitely. cool. You're here in Georgia? Yep, I'm here in, in Atlanta. Yep. Oh, okay, cool, cool, good. I've known, but how long? I've known you for what, 10 years now? At least. At least. Oh, yeah, at least yeah. 10 years now. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So we look forward to seeing you. Absolutely. And if Absolutely. there's anything we can do to help, hey, that's what we have to do. We have to be a family. Yeah. Absolutely. I appreciate the open invitation. I'm I'm going to hold you to that too. Okay, that's okay. that's a good one. <laughs> and he definitely be yeah, calling me. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> well, thank you so much to Terry and to Nat. Okay, man. Really thank appreciate you very much. it. <laughs> now I'll talk to y'all later. Okay. Bye. Bye. MC and my people call me Milk. When I'm busting up a party, I feel.